If you've spent much time watching lost media videos on YouTube, then you're probably familiar with the evil farming game that Reddit was trying to search for. For anybody that's unfamiliar, the story goes that back in 2015, somebody made a post on Reddit asking if anybody else remembered this game that was similar to Harvest Moon but with a dark twist. The case went pretty much cold, but then a few years somebody made another post talking about a very similar game and this kind of kicked everything into high gear. There was like an entire subreddit made, people were searching everywhere trying to figure out what this game could be, some people even made like fake screenshots of the game to try to claim that glory of being the ones to find this, but unfortunately nobody could figure out what this game was. And the big conclusion to this years-long hunt was that yeah, this game doesn't exist. Some people found clips of a streamer who was explaining that this would be a fun game if it existed, and the original posters realized that yeah, this is who they used to watch while they sleep, so it was just subconsciously in their brain thinking that they actually played it when they never really did. The reason I bring this up is because clearly the idea of a dark evil farming game is very intriguing to people. I mean, Reddit would not have searched for years trying to find this if it wasn't. Well, it's Reddit, so they, they still probably would have searched for it, but you get what I'm trying to say. Farming games like Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon have their claim to fame for being these very chilled out, cozy experiences where you can take things at your own pace, enjoy yourself, it's all very cute, you know, you move to a new town, you meet some cool new people, you fall in love, not with Shane, it's all just a really nice experience. This genre got defined in 1996 and has remained pretty much unchanged since then with very minor like quality of life things, but all of the pieces were there on the very first farming game, so if it's not broke, why would you try to fix it? To make it edgy. A while back I was browsing around on Steam and I found quite a few games that seemed to fall under the category that I would like to call a dark farming game, which seemed really intriguing to me because these two themes didn't really seem like they would fit together. We're in no shortage of horror games, especially ones that are like, oh it looks cute on the surface but it's actually really scary. And it seems like a farming game would be the perfect thing for that. Farming games are known for being cute and relaxed, so how do you flip that on its head? I think the first thing that people would think of when they're trying to make a game that fits that description would be just a direct parody of a farming game. Lakeview Valley is a game that shares a ton of similarities with Stardew Valley. In case you hadn't noticed, they uh... They share 50% of their name. It even starts off in almost the same way of Stardew Valley, where you hop on a bus ready to start your new life. You're chatting with the bus driver about starting anew, seeing how this new life is gonna go, but suddenly, the bus driver hits one of the villagers. This game really does not hold back when it comes to these messed up elements, like the first thing that you see is the bloodied body of a villager that just got ran over and your driver is freaking out. Even worse, I think the game is subtly trying to get you to be evil as soon as it starts because on this first screen, all you have is this body that is currently in pain because they just got hit by a bus, the bus driver who just hit her, you, and a hammer. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a perfect guy, okay? So when I first played this game, I thought I was supposed to take the hammer and put her out of her misery. That's just what I thought, I, I think most normal people would also think that. That's not what you're supposed to do. But that's the mindset that this game is putting you in. It's this version of you that wouldn't normally exist, but because of circumstances, now things are getting a little bit... dark. <laughs> That's stupid. This first screen is very interesting because it doesn't really give you any direction. It just gives you some items and tells you, go ahead, get started. And already a lot of people, at least from playthroughs that I've seen, that is a lot of people's first thoughts. After you make your way into town, you're doing the standard meeting people, getting to know the townsfolk, helping them out with things. I should say this is not a farming game in the sense where you literally farm. It's more so the move to town, meet new people, and help them out with whatever they need. As you do more requests for people and get to know them a little bit better as the days pass, you start to learn more things about them, as you normally would in a farming game. But as you begin to help more people and more days pass and they trust you more, you begin to learn more about what secrets they're keeping and that you really can't trust anybody. Eventually you piece together the fact that the townsfolk got together and killed a circus ringleader named Morgo, and now they're just trying to keep it under wraps so they don't have to like atone for their sins. 
Spoiler alert, they definitely have to do that. But some of that is up to you. In a normal farming game, you would befriend whoever you want. You have that freedom to get to know whichever person you want. And in this, you have the freedom to kill whoever you want. I'm pretty sure every single NPC in this game is able to be killed in some way. But once again, that's up to you. If you want to just walk around and help people all day, go to sleep at night and keep it moving, you can do that. You probably won't have that much fun playing, but you can do it. It's a really interesting twist on the whole freedom that you have in a normal farming game where you can walk around and go do whatever you want, though there are some major differences mainly in gameplay for this type of game versus a regular farming game. This game is much less focused on progress, like you're not going to be upgrading your house or building a barn and buying chickens, that's not the point of it. Though there is some upgrades mainly in quality of life, but those aren't really done through money. It's done through, you guessed it, killing people. You want an inventory system? You gotta kill somebody. Oh, you want a heads up display to see information that you probably want to see? You gotta kill somebody. I think a good dark farming game takes expectations that you would already have and turns them upside down when you don't expect it. In something like Stardew, you have the characters that are down on their luck and maybe aren't in the best living situation, but you have the ability to come in and help them and change their lives just with your own presence. Uh, in Lakeview Valley, the person who lives like that sits outside with a shotgun, and if you get too close, they shoot and kill you. Even some of the more standard interactions start to make you just feel bad when you're playing it. Like, there's this girl, Rebecca, um, she lost her cat, so whenever you go and find it and bring it back to her, you're starting to feel really good about yourself, you know you helped. Then you realize, oh, she's homeless, and you do feel a little bit worse, is there anything that I can do to try to help? Then, as time passes, you begin to learn more and more things, eventually culminating in the fact that she was the one who burned down her house so that she could try to kill her mom. That is her mom. I actually like this a lot, because it's not as cut and dry as what you're used to, where you go in, you're the savior of this down-on-their-luck town, and everybody is good-natured and, and feels good once you start talking to them. This does have more complexity. There are good and bad people, just like in real life. You can't even trust the Scarecrow. I mean, I, I probably wasn't going to trust the Scarecrow anyway, because look at him, but it would have been nice to at least have one friend here. Now I'm going to preface this next statement by saying I really do like Lakeview Valley. I think it's a really interesting concept. The story is actually really good, and I think it does a lot of things really well. I would not recommend this game to anybody. And not because it's a bad game, because it's not a bad game. Like I said, I have fun with it, but this game is just so horrible and messed up and dark that it is a lot. I feel like if I told one of my friends to play this, they would put me on a watch list. Like, any evil thing that you can think of is probably somewhere in this game, which is good for some people. Some people really like that. I'm not going to tell somebody to play this. And that brings me to a question that I got to thinking. How do you market a game like this? Like I said, these two genres are very dissimilar in a sense, so are you trying to pull in horror fans and hope that they'll just put up with the normal farming aspects, or do you want to bring in people who like traditional farming games but just hope that they like the scary or dark elements of it? Harvest Island is a self-proclaimed horror farming simulator, which I think is the biggest issue with this game. To be honest, this game probably should not even be in this video because it is not really that much of a horror game and it's definitely not a farming game, but I think the fact that it labels itself as one does help me prove this point. So yes, you do have the ability to plant crops, and yes, there are some tense moments, but really it doesn't go that far either way and I think that's going to leave people dissatisfied on both ends. Harvest Island shares 50% of its name with Harvest Moon, it's the first half if you're having trouble keeping up, but really that's where the similarities end. In my mind there are two main draws of a farming game, first being the huge diverse cast of characters that you can get to know and love, and then the freedom of exploration and doing things in your own time no matter how fast or slow. This game does not have any of that. There are really only three characters in this game. You've got the two main playable characters, and then their dad. Other than that, nobody else to talk to. And honestly, this is not an inherently bad thing. In fact, it could be good for the horror aspects of it. It would be really interesting to be stuck on an island alone with nobody to go to. But once again, that is like the opposite of what a farming game is. 
And then of course the progression. In a normal farming game like Harvest Moon, you would wake up and then the day is yours. Whatever you want to do that day, you can. If you want to spend the whole day on the farm, you can do that. If you want to spend the whole day talking to the little pink haired girl, you can do that as well. The fact that you have like a quest log with missions I think is the most telling part of this. Farming games are about letting you choose whatever you want to do, so saying, sorry you can't progress and you can't do anything until you finish this mission is very much against what those games would be. Once again, that's not a bad mechanic to have in a game, it's just a bad mechanic to have in a farming game, which is what is trying to be sold here. Like I said earlier, you're going to run the risk of upsetting people who want a farming game, but then you give them this linear RPG where you plant a couple potatoes and then there's a day-night cycle that doesn't do anything. That's not fun for those fans. The horror elements are definitely there, and they can sometimes be fairly effective. There are some tense moments, but once again, it's not taking advantage of being being a horror farming game. If you took like all of the farming out of this, the gameplay would not change. You still have to go through and do the missions of hitting rocks, getting wood, building bridges, and then checking your quest log to see what you need to do next. So you're probably asking yourself, why would you even bother marketing like this if there could be so much potential pushback from both sides? And the answer is, you gotta stand out. There's like a billion and one RPG maker horror games out there, but if you dangle an interesting concept above my head, I'm gonna be more likely to click. I mean, I'll admit, that's the only reason I bother to check out the game. I have pretty much no interest in regular horror games, but whenever you say, oh, it's a horror farming game, that sounds fun and fresh and unique, so that's why I bought it looked at it, and then was immediately disappointed. But really, at the end of the day, once you've made your game, the only thing that you really need to worry about is marketing and making it more popular. And probably the most popular of the dark farming game genre, at least for now, has got to be Graveyard Keeper. And honestly, it's really not hard to see why this game is so popular. It has a ton of elements that allow it to be a crowd pleaser for a ton of different people. In this game, you play as a modern man who goes back to medieval times and then has to run a graveyard in order to be able to go back to his time to get back with his wife. If you look at it deeper, it is the classic farming game. You're moving to a new spot, you're meeting new people and building relationships, and trying to progress your new life. But this really takes advantage of the more macabre subject matter in a way that not only affects the interactions that you have with various people, but also various gameplay aspects. You do have the standard farming, you know, plant your cabbages, plant your pumpkins, but keep in mind, you are also running a graveyard. Do you not feel like picking up these cabbages or pumpkins? Just make a zombie out of one of the bodies that you have. It's not immoral, they were dead, they weren't going to be doing anything anyway. It really is great that this is not just like Rune Factory with a medieval dark coat of paint on it. It very easily could have been that, and it probably would have been fine and, and let that carry it, but the fact that things do progress within the gameplay mechanics I think really makes this stand out amongst other ones. I think by now people are getting kind of tired of the standard farming game where you just plant a seed, go to the mines, and talk to people, and I have a feeling that this game is going to help usher in a new era of uh, new gameplay for farming games, as well as more unique and rich stories. It also definitely helps that this game does not take itself that seriously, like one of the first characters that you meet is a talking skull named Jerry, and he, he walks around like this, he hops around like this. You can really tell that the developers did not care that much about what they were doing, even though it is dark subject matter. The game strikes a really good balance between the dark aspects that I think the horror fans would like, but also having the dark humor and more advanced mechanics of a farming game that I think farming game fans would like. The game knows what it is, you know what it is, and you pretty much get what you get. Of course, being surprised is also a very valid way to experience a dark farming game. Gleaner Heights is a game that I think does this really, really well, because on the surface, this is a completely normal farming game. In fact, I will go as far to say that this just straight up is a normal farming game, if you want to play it like that. I believe that there are going to be people that spend like an entire in-game year just not experiencing anything other than the normal farming game aspects, because once again, going back to the marketing, this game markets itself almost only as just a regular farming game. A classic farming game with contemporary controls, crafting, farming, romance, that's great. Honestly, even in gameplay, it's pretty much what you would expect. You plant your seeds, you walk around town, you meet new people, they have sometimes repeating dialogue. This is 
a normal farming game. If you just walk around town all day, talk to people, plant your seeds, and go to bed at night and mind your own business, it will still be a fairly fun game. But maybe one night you're out a little bit later than you usually would be. You know, you're trying to burn off some of that energy. Maybe you're going to try to do some fishing and you're on your way home. You take the usual route home and pass by Lee and Matilda's house. That's the new couple that you're becoming friends with when suddenly a cutscene starts. There you see Lee and Matilda arguing in the privacy of their own home. This is something that they would not necessarily show you because you would be around, but Looking in, you see them fighting, and eventually Lee hits her. You later on run into Matilda, and she asks if she can talk to you because she has nobody else to talk to, and she confides in you that Lee is in fact abusive, and she's thinking about leaving him. While you're having this conversation, Lee ends up coming home, so you hide in the closet, and you once again watch abuse happen. Now at this point, you have options, like you normally would in a farming game. You can completely choose to ignore it if you want. You can step out of the closet and fight Lee, tell him to stop. You even have the ability to kill him if you want. And if you want to completely skip this interaction, you can do that as well. Just don't go to Matilda's house when she asks you to. This is the freedom that you normally have in a farming game, but with much more of a twist that your actions have direct consequences that can hurt or even kill people. Like if you don't catch a fish for somebody in Story of Seasons, it doesn't really matter, life goes on, but in this case, somebody is going to die. Somebody could keep getting abused if you don't do anything. If you go over there, you have the ability to stop it, you have the ability to go even farther than that, but it's up to you. It's still your story that you are making happen. There's much more that happens in this game, but I really don't want to spoil anything past that point. This happens fairly early on, but there is a lot more that happens throughout. I would suggest playing this game if you're interested in this. I don't think it's going to be for everybody, because the game is admittedly very, very slow. Like I said, you could go a whole year without running into any of these dark elements if you don't really know what you're doing. Honestly, the dark elements even start off fairly realistic. Like, if you look at Stardew Valley, Shane has an alcohol problem and a depression problem. It's not really played for drama or, like, darkness, but it is there, so things that you start initially seeing do seem like they could be in a regular farming game, but as things go more and more off the rails, it becomes even darker, even scarier, and a lot crazier. I think it kind of runs into the Doki Doki Literature Club problem. Yes, I did download Doki Doki Literature Club for this. I did not play it for that long. Doki Doki is probably the most famous of the not what it seems types games, though I think a lot of that craziness kind of goes away when on the title screen it basically says, hey, we got something bad going on here. Gleaner Heights gives absolutely no content warning, which is both a good and a bad thing. I don't think I need to explain why it's cool and why it's bad to have something like that, but it is at least interesting. In a perfect world, somebody would pick this up, not know what's happening in it, and slowly have things revealed. I think that's probably what the developer had in mind when they were making this. The evil farming game genre is one that is still fairly new and definitely undersaturated, but I think as more and more farming games Games become similar, developers are going to do whatever they can to differentiate themselves, so we're going to have more games that fall into this genre, and hopefully more that have really good quality. If you know of any dark farming games that might fall into this category, please let me know, because obviously I'm interested in this, and there really, like I said, aren't that many that are out there, so I'd love to know of more if there are. I appreciate you watching this one, and if there is any topic that you'd like to see me talk about, feel free to let me know. I'd be interested to hear what people want to hear me say. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one.